Welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with Dr. Sophia Bano. She's with Baylor College of Medicine and she runs the clinic at Ben Taub and is the, called the Torture Survivors no. Clinic. Yeah, it's, it's called the Clinic for International Trauma Survivors and we specifically treat torture survivors also. And it's all torture survivors here in Houston. In Houston now, mostly refugees. Mostly refugees. Now, um, I'd like for you to share with me how you ended up living your passion because your passion is taking care of refugees. Yes, um, so a, a long, long time ago, right after medical school, I started to work in Nepal for an agency called Center for Victims of Torture because they had a lot of women who had been, you know, tortured and raped and they were refusing to go see a male doctor, so a friend of mine asked me to join them and that's how my road started uh, to my passion. And also, I guess it was already in my in my blood, so to speak, because my parents were refugees also. Because you were so, born in Tibet. Yeah, and I was born in India, but my parents are from Tibet. Your parents are from Tibet, so you yeah. were, you, they had to flee to India. To India yeah. Let's talk about um, the refugees here in Houston. You handle uh, torture uh, victims, but you've shared with me that they're very resilient. What are some of the myths about uh, refugees? Well, um, some of the myths or misconceptions would be that refugees would come and, you know, be dependent on the government, would be on welfare, uh, you know, would take other, other, would take up jobs that were, you know, people are already suffering from here. But that's one of the things that I wanted to clear up, that less than 1% of refugees are on welfare. Most of the refugees who come here are able to find a job, keep the job, work really hard. I have refugees who work, you know, night shifts and during the daytime they have another job. They provide for the family, their kids go to school. So really, really hard working and they do not want to be dependent on the government. They want to be self-sufficient and move forward. We lives. know, we know, for instance, that immigrants tend to work harder than, you know, first generation or second or third generation um, uh, Americans, let's say, because there's no going back. Mm -hmm. But in, in the case of refugee, there's really not only not going back, but dealing with tremendous trauma. Mm -hmm. So what do you learn uh, from, from them about life, about survival? What I learn from them is that I should stop complaining about my complaints, like whether it's traffic or the heat or, <laughs> or, or the work, you know and, and uh, be grateful and thankful for what we have because when I see them and when I hear their stories or oh, you read in the news you know, about what everybody's going through all over the world, you, you, you begin to feel grateful for what you have and I think that's a huge thing for us. So besides feeling grateful, I think I learned that human beings are very, very resilient whether they're young children or adults or older, older people, all of them are very, very resilient and they somehow manage to go past the trauma and pick up their life pieces that they are that's on the ground and pick up and, and move forward. And I think that's a really important lesson for all of us. You know, you know it, uh, as you know, it's it, uh, resettling refugees becomes controversial, especially during uh, a political season. And also, uh, you know, seeing, I uh, guess, half a million refugees entering Europe and, and you know it's in the news on a daily basis how do you uh, how do, because because people don't generally know how uh, refugees are, are entering the United States and how um, they they get resettled what are some of the things that you think people need to know about refugees when it comes to resettling them well when it comes to resettling them one has to know that they've been through a lot already before they come to the United States I've had refugees who were living in camps for 20 years. Some of them were even born in the camps, and then they moved here, you know? So it's not that, oh, they say, oh, I'm a refugee, can the U.S. accept me? It's not that. They have to go through a whole process of, uh, you know, through different multiple agencies, which could take years, you know? And so it's not an easy process for them to gain that status, and it's the United Nations that sort of defines who is a refugee, you know? And so they go through multiple steps, which could take them as many as long as 20 to 30 years, and then they come here. So when they come here, each resettlement agency takes a number, and Houston is now the largest number 
of the refugees being accepted into Houston, and next year it's going to be even larger. Uh, it seems to be the number one place that people want to come to, or, or oh really, least, Houston? At least, uh -huh. at least the resettlement agencies are uh -huh. accepting more, you know. So, and I've heard also that I want to share with the Houston uh, audience that apparently uh, refugees feel that Houston has been really, really good to them. Oh they really? Know, yes, they they. I've had uh, resettlement agency managers tell me that, that when I ask them, so how, how do they feel, what do they say? They say, oh, they're so grateful that Houston has been really good to them. Why do you think that is? Because, you know, we have a good, Houston has a really good reputation of, uh, for example, even Katrina evacuees mm -hmm. and how uh, we treated them and how they also resettled here. What do you think it is about Houston that, that, um, that has that um, reputation? I, I think it's the diverse group of people, you know, everybody has either, they know someone or they've been through a lot themselves or they've had families, you know, and I think Houstonians are very uh, kind and generous people, like for instance, like you are doing this concert, you know, yeah. raise awareness and raise a little bit of money. And December so 5th, I'm going to plug the concert, <laughs> December 5th, we're having a concert, check my Facebook page. <laughs> so, so we're very grateful to you, you know, and and in the past, also you've done interviews about sure. refugees. Uh, what is it? The Living. Houston refugees. Yeah, yes. the story. stories of courage. Yes, 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 and that was an excellent piece. Yeah. I've had people say that they've seen that, and you know, and so I think um, Houstonians have opened their doors and you know their hearts to refugees, and I hope it will continue. You know, I've always, obviously, had a soft spot. Your soft spot. Your your parents uh, were refugees. My grandparents were refugees on both sides. Uh, um, one side from the Spanish Civil War in Spain and the other side from Syria, Lebanon, you know, the, the Middle East has always mm -hmm. been a powder keg. Um, but I uh, always felt that uh, it just breaks my heart, the, the, what's going on in, in Syria, and it's been going on for, for four years. Um, do you think that these people, now what I understand, do you know anything about the Syrians that are coming to the United States? I think we'll be accepting 10,000 uh, next year. If they're, what I hear is they're highly educated. Yes, and, and so highly educated, I think um, what I've heard uh, is that their trauma is so much more severe, but I guess there's no way to measure trauma, right. but from what I've heard that it's really, um, the refugees are becoming will be more traumatized than many other groups of refugees. Is it because okay. of the bombing or, the, I mean, there yeah, so many bombing, more deaths than... Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and I think it was sort of like a civil war too, right? I mean, between different factions. Different factions. But, but that happens in most, a lot of other countries too. But for some reason, that's what I, I'm reading. And I guess you can see from the news and everything, you know, how much they're suffering. Okay. Well, Dr. Banu, thank you so much uh, for joining us, and thank you for the work that you also do with, with refugees. Thank it's you. It's great to have you here in Houston yeah. and in Passion Time. <laughs>